All right, welcome back to another Mike Reads. Today we're going to do a review. Uh, and the book we're going to review is a book I just finished about an hour or two ago this morning, and it's Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson, The Shortest and Surest Way to Understand Basic Economics. So I'll just say right off the bat that I actually really enjoyed it, um, but it gets a bit repetitive. Um, so I'm going to compare and contrast this to a few other books, uh, chiefly Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations and... Um, I don't have it right here with me. It's up on my bookshelf, but Thomas Sowell's um, uh, Economic Facts and Fallacies. This is intended to be an introductory book into the world of economics, and it does a great job of that. It takes one lesson, which is Bastiat's broken window fallacy, and applies it to a, a number of different realms of not all that specific um, economic fallacies, which are relatively common especially in the time it was written. I should give the caveat that this book was a root that the version I have is the, uh, is the most recent reprint by, uh, let's see, Three Rivers Press. Uh, Hazlitt had three editions of this book. The first edition was first published in 1946, and the final edition, I think, met its final revision in 1978, I believe. Um, 32 years later. So this version actually contains just a handful of updates. And I think most importantly, the final chapter, um, which was originally the lesson restated, chapter 25, um, there's a third part in here, which uh, is chapter 26, the lesson after 30 years. So it's kind of like him reviewing his uh, reviewing and critiquing his own arguments 32 years later with a little bit of insight. So I really, this is the version I think that you guys should should look into if you're going to, to look into this book. Don't find the original. Uh, it's, it is available for free online um, in a digital format. I, I like the tangible book. I think it's easier on my eyes. It allows me to take notes if I want to, write in the book really easily. Uh, and, and just physically holding it, I think it's just it's, it's a more ergonomic read. As to the actual content of the book, what it is is it, is it takes a single idea, a, a single... Um, case study, which is thought experiment, which is Bastiat's uh, broken window fallacy, and applies it to kind of practical applications of mostly policy in regards to economic fallacies. Um, and if it were, if I were to describe it, it wouldn't really be much in the way, if it were part of a debate, it would probably be the opening arguments of a debate rather than, say, uh, a rebuttal or the concluding arguments, I would say it's probably the opening arguments of a debate, if it were to be formatted that formulated that way. It is a single lecture. Um, what I do like is that the the applications are broken down into, it, the whole book is only 211 pages, and there's 26 chapters, so the chapters are actually relatively short. Um, I actually, just generally speaking, liked it. In terms of an, in, an introduction, this is the book to go to, I think. Um, it is not nearly as – now, this, this is basically argumentative in, the, in its approach. Um, so is Thomas Sowell's Economic Facts and Fallacies. Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, which is basically the, the origin of modern economics, isn't really argumentative as it is so much just strict observations of what's hap what has happened and what is happening around Adam Smith in 1776. This is more of an argument of an approach, but with the wealth of nations, most importantly, what it, what the wealth of nations is is exhaustive. This isn't. This is taking one really simple argument and applying it to a number of circumstances, and it doesn't even. It's not even exhaustive in its application, and, and it never intends to be. So this is why I consider it kind of an incomplete book in that respect, but not really because it's only meant to be an introductory book. And what's great about this version as well, which is part of why I recommend it, is that in this third in this um, third edition, he gives a, a chapter, it's a note on books, and he gives basically ne recommended reading and gives in order um, the books, the, fo the, the follow-ups that he recommends. And he actually says that Adam Smith is the book you should read last in these recommendations. I don't really think that's necessarily the case. Um, as far as the read is concerned, it's a very easy read. Um, it's not nearly as difficult to a read as Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. And I would even argue that his sentence styling is actually structurally more simple than even Thomas Sowell. Um, so it's actually, I would consider it an even easier read than, than, than Thomas Sowell in, this, in that respect. Um, 
So it's really it's a really great place to start off. On to my critiques. I think it does this deliberately because it is so um, repetitive as to become. I, I called it pedantic. It sounds like it's being pedantic on purpose. I I think that for somebody who's actually relatively well versed in economics to begin with and just general economic theory, you get through the first five or six chapters and it's like, okay, we get the point. Um, and and then I think it becomes a bit repetitive after that. So if you're like me and you 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 want to get more into the economic foray, I still do recommend this is the first book you should read to start off. This is like an absolute must read. Um, but if you get through the first five or six chapters and say, okay, this is getting a bit re- repetitive here. I get it. Um, go ahead and skip right to chapter, I would say the third to last chapter and start from there. Um, because that's where he starts to get into some of the deeper content. Now, I'll, I will also add that his criticisms on what was at the time modern monetary theory in economics towards the end of the book, uh, when he gets to less practical application and more abstract application, it, it just isn't as well thought out. Um, and there are some things that he ha- some arguments that he makes that are flawed, even though the things that he are, is rebutting are definitely flawed arguments that I would never agree with. Um, his, the arguments that he presents are sometimes flawed. So it starts to waver once he, once he gets away from the practical application and then into the abstract application um, in terms of just the content, the value of the content. Um, uh, but yeah, so like I said, he gets to be a bit redundant and that's where I would say he, he I, I would detract from his, his read a little bit. Um, and again, it's so pedantic that it's so redundant that I believe it was deliberately done so in a pedantic manner so as to, you know, really drive the point home. Um, and that's why it's really only an introductory book. So I'm going to give this, if I'm going to give this on a scale of, of a 1 to 10, I'm going to give this an 8. And I would honestly say that Thomas Sowell's um, Economic Facts and Fallacies, I haven't read his basic economics yet, so I'll give that caveat. Um, that's one of my next reads. Um, Economic Facts and Fallacies is a better written book. It's a better read. Another another det- thing that I would like to point out, although this is a, an introductory book, there are almost no citations in here. And he makes a point of not doing that because he's speaking in, in a pure hypothetical. And it's almost a philosophical read in the way it reads. Um, he's, he tries not to focus on so much of specific examples and cited sources, which is what Sowell does. Again, it's a different argument that Sowell's building and a different manner that he's building the argument. But I kind of prefer the, the more data-driven approach that Sowell uses um, because you know it's great to talk about the abstract application and, and it's great to talk about the practical abstr- uh, application in abstract manners. But I also want to see, you know, Sowell has hundreds if not thousands of citations in all of his books, especially um, economics and um, economic facts and fallacies. This whole book might have 25 citations in the whole thing. Uh, if it's even that many, uh, it's it's less than I would argue it's less than one a chapter, and you know, the point its purpose is to be an introductory book. So I guess his purpose in having that uh, work work side big, basically bibliography at the end of the book is to say, listen, here are my arguments. You can see how they make it make sense for further reading on these arguments and for further extra um, for further expansion on these arguments. You really need to read these other these other works, which do far more citation now. The Well of Nations has almost no citations itself, um, but at the time there was nothing. There's hardly any literature to actually cite at the ma- at the time, and uh, in 1776, the way you would cite sources was n- n- the manner and need to cite sources back in 1776 was not nearly what it is today. So there just aren't as many citations. So I'd say those are the two big detractors: is that it, it gets a bit redundant and it just doesn't read as a data driven book the way that Soul writes. Um, otherwise, it's 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 an absolute must in the way that it, it, it expounds upon the um, broken window fallacy, which is probably the most important fallacy to um, to apprise yourself of in economics and the most one, the most important lesson to be learned in economics. So economics in one lesson, eight out of ten, I would it's an absolute must for those who are trying to get into the foray of economics. However, it is a an introductory book. Uh, and nothing else. And I would say from here, you should go to Seoul and read Economic Facts and Fallacies. I would say those are the first two you should start with. Although I would agree that if you're looking for a more exhaustive read, you are looking for Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. So that would be Economics and One Lessons. One Lesson, I do recommend it. So check it out. This has been Mike with my review. Signing off.